evening, guys. How's it going? Evening? Well, it depends. When you're watching, it might be morning. It might be any time of the day. For me, it's evening. <clears throat> anyway, so what do we got? What do we have? We got the May. So an upright Maytag, half horsepower, built between 1916 and 1920. Tough to know exactly when it was built. The records were lost in a fire. So nobody really knows, but you know, there are some pretty educated guesses out there. So let's just say you have a four, a four year window to, to have this in. It's not extremely early because the carburetor, which is this, this is an E-carb, bolts up to the crankcase. The other ones, uh, the earlier ones, bolted up onto the uh, main bearing here. So let's say between 1916 and 1920, let's put it 1918. What the heck, huh? <clears throat> so, what you guys do? You guys just had Memorial Day weekend, I think. Uh, is that what it was down there in the States? Our uh, Victoria Day long weekend was the week before. Anyway, so what do we got to do? This has been sitting on my bench for like three years now. Um, it's got to move off the bench. I got to get uh, move some other stuff off the bench and clear the bench. And usually before I finish with stuff, I want to make sure it works and then I'll put it away. Never to be run again. Well, who knows, right? Anyway, again, half horsepower, serial number, what is this, 58192. And red, red tank with a, uh, a um, crankcase. Well, this whole piece would have been kind of a dark bluey green. Same with the flywheel, dark bluey green. You can see there's some paint still left there. Um, what is there we can say about this? Yes, we have to get it off the bench. It's got to go. So, I bought this engine. This was the only engine I wanted. I picked up a trailer full of engines. I bought a whole trailer full of engines and sold it to a buddy of mine for exactly the price that I paid for it, with one exception, that I got to keep this engine. That was the only thing that I wanted in the whole trailer full of engines. Um, so I was happy to pick it up, deliver it, and all that kind of stuff to my friend, uh, Norm Smythe. So, they used, these engines used to run for, oh gosh, between twelve and $2,000 you'd get for an engine like this. Now, you know, the economy the way it is, and, uh, the market the way it is, eh, 800 bucks kind of a thing, all working, and, you know, I wouldn't say all painted up. Paint is not a, a thing for me. If it's got original paint still left on it, we just leave that there, and, give people a hint of what it might look like in the past. So what do we got to do here today? So to finish up this, we have to make, here's the cylinder by the way, we have to make a gasket. Careful not to cover up the intake port, transfer port. We need to make a gasket, a base gasket. We also need to make a gasket for the tank so this doesn't leak. If you remember back, if you guys happen to watch my video where I did a, um, a video on electrolysis. Um, we had done that on this tank and cleaned this tank out. So we'll just give this a bit of a rinse and it'll be good to go. Inside this carburetor, this is an E-carb. I just add, made this little add-on piece here because there's a wee little stem sticking out here and I had not much to go on. And then I kind of repacked it with plumber's tape so it offers a little resistance there when I go to turn it. Inside here, is a ball bearing, check ball. Down here, see so you can hear that. Hear that? There's a check ball down there to stop the fuel from dropping back into the tank. Uh, under here is a butterfly valve, air admittance valve. And that would be very similar to like a reed valve. There's a spring, there's a little umbrella which probably is quite worn, should be refaced on the lathe, and probably a flat bottom. Um, this should be cleaned up at the bottom there and flattened right out. So with a, uh, you know, milling uh, on the mill. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to that, who knows. Anyway, that goes back in there. Leave it out for now. Here is your air admittance, your air intake. I've just tightened that up with a little bit of thread tape. And that allows the air to go in, sucks into the bottom, comes up through the hole, pushes the intake, sucks and lifts that little umbrella against that spring pressure. At the same time, sucks fuel up through here, and then 
out here and then into here, into the crankcase. So what we got to do, I, I think it, I mean, when I got this home, I didn't have it all apart, <clears throat> but it did a really good compression. So if it's got good compression, generally that means there shouldn't be a lot stopping it from running, really. Good compression means good chance, in other words. So <clears throat> let's, um, the carburetor is fine. I'm happy with that. Like I say, off camera, I kind of made an adjustment, just kind of lengthened that out, soldered a piece on there. Um, went through this and um, it's ready to go. Cylinder is ready, like I say. Let's make some gaskets. I'll show you guys how to make some gaskets if you don't know how to make gaskets. This is the commutator over here. So this transfer, this runs on a buzz coil, by the way. So the way the timing works, the spark timing works is, this is quite wore out as well. But as this passes over this brass pad, can you guys see that? There's a brass pad there. It touches and it completes the circuit to ground and then it sparks via the buzz coil and the spark plug and you get fire. You can check that if you want to see how that works. There was, by the way, this was the wire that was on it before. I took it off. It had a lot of bare spots on it. And the last thing I wanted was one more thing to kind of impede me in trying to get it running. I didn't want it to just go straight to ground. So I had a piece of wire like this, some antique cloth cord wire that I put some ends on. So there's the end. We'll stick one here. We'll just test that. There it goes. You can hear that. And run this to ground. So as this commutator is passed over with this little flinging arm, this is the governor actually, the speed controlling governor, it makes, yeah, it completes the circuit. And I did adjust the timing to just before top dead center, which is right there. And that's about where it should be. So let's make some gaskets and let's see if we can get it running, huh? All right, guys, so here we got a chunk of, yeah, let's cut that off there. Just be in our way. Chunk of gasket material I got. What is that? That's about uh, 30 thou, I think. Calipers hiding. I think it's 30 thou. What do I got? Let's zero that out. 30 thou. 0.295. I put that on there. I don't know how you guys make your gaskets, but this is how I make my gaskets. And uh, who taught me this? I don't know who the heck taught me this. Maybe my buddy Road King. And this, that would have been a long time ago. So first what I do is you can see there's some bolt holes there. So we'll line this up, make sure we got some coverage around the tank. And we're going to find our, our holes. Ball peen hammer. And over here somewhere. One over here somewhere. One over here. Good. There's our holes. What do we do next? What I do to finish that up is, I think I have a hole punch somewhere. You can also keep banging away at it, but I don't really want to do that. So, hole punch. And I need a little piece of wood. Here we go. All right, I found something. Piece of wood. Just so it's got something to kind of go into. So there you go, hole punch. Line it up where your hole was, your mark was. There's one. There's two. That one fell out on its own. that. So there, make sure your holes are the right ones because they maybe are not always exactly lined up. And that looks about, I think that's right. That looks right. So then once we got that, I take some bolts. I run that bolt in just to kind of hold it in place, you know, as I fumble with it. 
That'll hold this gasket in place while I do the rest of it. Because don't forget, we gotta do the inside of the tank and the outside of the tank. And hopefully you held your gasket fairly rigid while you're doing making those holes. So you don't have it all bunched up here. Okay, that's pretty good. Over the camera focus. <clears throat> so then we come around, huh? And if that edge is sharp, what's going to happen is it's going to cut its own gasket. As you can see, it's kind of a, a hitting and sliding motion at the same time. You can use this end if it's a little bit of a corner. Don't wail on it, just tap it. You're not going to break anything. Not going to break the cast, don't worry. You can also send away the gaskets if you want to. These gaskets, I bought a whole bunch of gasket material. Um, Flywheel Supply had a online, a, a live, uh, what do you call it? Flea market kind of thing? Flea market? That's not the word. It's something else I'm looking for. It's some, uh, some other word in my head. And I bought enough gasket material to uh, last me probably for the rest of my, my days. There you go. That's the outline done. So you get the idea, huh? That's pretty good, isn't it? It's a nice, uh, nice fit. I'll go around the inside now. I'll knock out the inside. I'll turn you right back on. All right, there's your tank gasket. We can take that back. We also have a nice big chunk here that we can use for uh, Probably for the carburetor. Matter of fact, we could even use it for the. Let's see, pull something back into fit, focus here. Probably on here. We could use it here. We might have enough here for the rest of our work. So let's not waste it. So, anyway, like I said, you can buy your gaskets pre made if you want. It's, um, it's just actually too easy for me to just make them myself, so I just do. And uh, there you go. One gasket. Move on to a cylinder, huh? Same procedure. Same idea. Let's zoom out a bit, okay? There we go. <clears throat> same procedure, same idea. We're gonna use, we could probably use this one. First of all, we gotta make it so it fits over this hole. So how big we need this? We can take a little bit off of this so it's easy. Oh, we can probably just go like this easier to manage, huh? Kind of awkward. Let's just use more than we need. Let's go with that. Just keep working it and it will eventually cut itself because that is a sharp edge there. Generally they don't ease the edges on anything. There you go. There you go, that goes on there. Looks like we need to make it a little bit wider. Or will that go? That's pretty close. A little more diameter on it maybe. You get the idea. Let's keep on trucking with that. All right, that's all cleared away. Let's just mark this so I know. So this is E, X, exhaust side. Just so I remember how it goes back, huh? Let's take that off, finish it up like I showed you before with the punch. <clears throat> Don't think I have to. I think it just fell out on its own after I was tapping it. Let's clean it up a bit, huh? Nice. Good. So we do have to remove a fair amount for that transfer port access there. 
So it's just gonna run that ragged edge. So what we'll do is we'll first knock out the outline. <clears throat> and then we'll trim the inside. I got, I got my little plugs stuck in there. <laughs> From when I was making the gasket. Out of there. What a wet spring we're having here. It's nuts. The last year for the last, I don't know how many years, we've had a drought. We've been in a drought and this year we have so much water that every dry slough or dugout is completely full now. It's crazy. But, you know, as long as everyone's got, as long as the farmers have done their seeding, then uh, should not be too many complaints. I mean, I wouldn't think. Okay, so there we go, like so. Now let's go all the way around it. We don't need to put in bolts because that's a pretty nice and snug fit. So we go around the outside. Not beating it to death, like I said. You know, gasket material is pretty cheap. You don't really, you know, if you can learn to make your own gaskets, you can, uh, I don't know, there's a bit of a, a nice feeling of satisfaction in doing it yourself, doing your own work. And you know, if you're on a, you're on a, a bit of a budget, then, then that, uh, that works too. Here we go. One gasket, one head gasket, done. We got a little bit left, enough for the carburetor, I think. So I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna cut that little area around there. So it's really, so we got the transfer port there and I'll turn you back on when we have the um, carburetor done. Okay, our guest is Carol May. There's a little, our little, where are you? <laughs> our little gasket for the carburetor. <clears throat> Let's get this assembled. Let's put the, uh, what do you call it? Crankcase? Crankcase assembly uh, onto the base. Let's get that on there. Get that lined up. Pretty good. That's backwards. <laughs> I didn't say I'd rehearse this. Come on. I'm just looking at the casting here. Backwards. Let's go this way. Can you guys see over my shoulder? Okay. Let's take this out of our way for a second. That is the... Um, do I just have huge tools around me here? That is the... Uh, the greaser. Looks like somebody made it actually. I had it out and I filled it full of grease. That's how you grease the main bearing. It also provides a seal. It's also the seal for the main bearing so you don't have you don't suck air into the crankcase. See? Kind of a weird. Somebody obviously made it and then they kind of ran it in so it would make its own threads. We'll keep using it, but it should be a um, just a uh, a nipple. And then this uh, a nipple screwed into here, into the grease cup. Anyway, let's get that out of the way. That's the main bearing back here, which is the support piece for the, they call it the main bearing because it's the main bearing surface for the, um, for the crank. Get that in. There we go. Okay. I will run these all in. You guys know how tight to make these, don't you? Don't uh, don't make them uh, gorilla tight. Just make a monkey tight. There's no need to bust off parts, right? We don't want to do this at that stage. So look at my pile here. Do it evenly. Tighten them evenly. There is, like I say, there is a gasket under there, so it's not like it has to be. Uh, Super, super tight. 
That, that bolt could have done a little cleaning up by the look of it. We'll get back to that one. <clears throat> get that one on there. The buffing wheel and clean that up. Snug that up. And snug. And snug. That's just stopping the fuel from sloshing out of the thing. We're going to take that out. Clean that up and put it back on. i turn you guys off for a second. Come back and next we'll put the cylinder on to the piston. Okay, I cleaned that up. So here you go. Have a look at this here. There's your connecting rod. And that's your crank pin. It just fits on there. slides on there. How much play do we have? That's just in the table. That's just in the base itself. But let's see. That may need a bushing. You can hold that down. You know what? It's not that bad. It's not much there. There might be, oh boy, two thou? You can barely feel it. Which means it's probably more than tight enough. And when you crank the grease in there, it actually tightens all that up. It tightens that seal up. So anyway, let's back you up a little bit. Move you off my arm. Okay, so when we put these these um, Piston rings are not pinned, so normally on a newer, newer piston, two strokes for sure, which are kind of my specialty. These would be pinned so that they can't rotate. These can rotate. There's no pin. These, um, you know, what? this piston looks to be in real nice shape. No scoring. Doesn't look like it's been over, over overheated or anything like that. So somebody used uh, lots of oil in the mix and and uh, yeah, it's in really nice shape. So we'll get some oil on there. Just lubricate it for assembly. There we go. Put some in the cylinder. You guys can see all that. There's our gasket with our holes down there. Okay, that's ready. Wipe off my hands. So, these rings, we're going to stagger them. And let's see. You know, roughly. Don't have this one right in line with the wrist pin. So, let's put that one there. Let's put this one, oh God, I don't know. At about 90 degrees from that. And then we can just stagger that one there. How's that look? Yeah, it'll find its place anyway. If you look at the bottom of the cylinder, you see there's a taper. Can you guys see that? There's a beveled edge there. That beveled edge is meant to make your life easy when reinstalling the cylinder. So just you don't need a spring compressor or a ring compressor, sorry. Just squeeze that and slide it on. To the next one. It's a bit of um, fussy work. Squeeze it, slide it. There we go. We got the second one. Let's get this one here. Again, push it up, squeeze it so it's kind of. So you almost close the ring gap, and there you go. There, we're on. And. Gonna go to the bottom, bottom dead center, and we're gonna just drop that on there. Not drop, but snug it and slide on there. Good, that is on. Now we're gonna put some bolts in there and bolt the head to the crankcase. <clears throat> I have reserved two shorter ones. I noticed there's two short ones. I don't want them to interfere with the um, the main bearing bolts coming through, so I wanted to make sure these were the short ones. So I'm gonna run those in. I'm going to turn you back on because the last thing you want to do is watch me run bolts in, huh? Okay, guys. So, got the carburetor bolted up. You saw me make, well, you didn't see me make the gasket, but you saw me make the other gasket. It's pretty simple. Got that on there. How's the compression? Can you hear for it? Listen up for it. Pretty darn good compression. Yeah. 
There should not be a problem with compression on this, on this engine. It actually has no problem bouncing against compression. I don't have an exhaust pipe for it or muffler, so we'll just have to go with it open. Maybe it'll start, maybe it won't, we don't know. Uh, what else? A little bit of play there in the wrist pin. I can kind of feel it there. See that bit right there? You notice that? That's the distance, that's the where the um, connecting rod is attached to the wrist pin and that's the little bit of play in the wrist pin between the small end of the, of the connecting rod and the wrist pin. That's that little bit. You can see actually the crank is moving. It's not just, it's not anything else. Yeah. Probably nothing to be, you know, if I went in there, I might change that, take that piston off and put a new connecting rod or a new uh, wrist pin, but we shall try it. So let's make up some, uh, mix up some fuel, 16 to one. Let's get a buzz coil hooked up to it and battery. And let's try it and see if we can get it around and we can put it away on the shelf for the next 100 years. All right, let's get some fuel in there. Let's see how much we can spill. <laughs> It'd be my luck that I'll put not quite enough fuel in for it to not, for it to be sucked up by the, uh, by the carburetor, be just underneath the pickup, huh? Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, that'd be, that would sound just like me. Let's keep going. Let's dump it all in, what the heck. We'll know that we're not short. Gurgling all over the place. I don't think I have enough for the whole, to fill the whole tank. That looks pretty good. Let's tie that and hook up a buzz coil. Okay, I've got it set up just to show you how it works. And if you are smart, you stay very well insulated from a buzz coil. <clears throat> so we've got high voltage lead out from, let me just zoom out for you for a second. High voltage lead out from the buzz coil. Your primary circuits are over here. You have to come in line series with the battery and back with the uh, chassis ground and I have the commutator connected where it will spark so we should see spark here so let's keep a lookout for it again stay away from it don't get a shock I've had a shock it's uh, not something very pleasant can you see it I assume you can I'm not going to hold it for you. Oops. Got you guys so zoomed in you can't see anything. That's really helpful, huh? So if it does get connected, it goes to the spark plug. There we go. And this one is heading over to the battery. And from the battery here, we're going to go the chassis here. So uh, what do we, I can't remember how I set up that last one. Do you guys remember how I set it up? I think I had it a half turn open on fuel. So let's do that. Let's do a half turn open on fuel. I'm in your way as usual, huh? Uh, a little pair of pliers. I think it was a half turn. I don't remember what the instructions are. I didn't go back and look, but I think it was a half turn. So let's go. Let's do a half. Uh, let's do a little bit more than a half. What the heck, huh? There we go. Open there. I think we had a full turn on the air. So one. And yeah, we'll go one. Yeah, let's go one. We got to choke a little bit too, huh? And again, put some gloves on. Keep yourself well away from anything that sparks like that. This is a good ground, good a ground as any, right on the fuel connection. Got the grease cup turned in. Falls off the table, well, we'll just jump back, right? 
I haven't primed it yet. I'm not going to prime. I'm just going to yank it over. See where we go from there. See if it starts. I think that's enough, huh? <laughs> well, that didn't take long to make run. Yeah, and as I said, the fuel kind of leaks and pours all over. I could definitely use some fine tuning, but uh, boy, that did not take long. That was a lot less fussy than the last engine, wasn't it? So with that, we can stick it on the shelf. <laughs> we'll drain that fuel out tonight. And uh, anyway, guys, so that actually didn't run too bad. Um, hey, yeah, Governor, we could speed it up a little bit and make it fire a little more often. But, um, yeah, kind of a resounding success. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a, a great rest of your week. And thanks for joining me here in the shop. And, uh, yeah, kind of pleased with that. <laughs> Take it easy. Good night.